Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 22nd, and it is currently a nice sunny morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. But I uh, got to do yard work this afternoon, so of course we're going to have thunderstorms. Ah oh, well. <laughs> I was going to do it yesterday, but it, it got to 94. 495 something like that it was just really hot and I thought ah, I'll put it off until tomorrow morning because it's only going to be up to 90 today and well I made a mistake there I didn't know the thunderstorms were coming in anyway we'll try to fit it in so uh, lots of stuff to talk about today I I had uh, I, I don't have a pipe right now because I'm gonna be loading up something in a minute to talk about um, so I had to put in an order last week for uh, a refill of Haunted Bookshop, and I thought, well, I've heard really good things on the live streams about this Nutty Irishman blend, so I wanted to try that. It's Cornell and Deal Aromatic, and a lot of people have been talking about this Saint Espresso blend, and I thought, well, let me let me try that out too. The reason being, my wife and I are going to be going on vacation in a couple of weeks, and I always try to take to get an aromatic that she will in well she won't enjoy it but at least it'll be nice while we're driving uh, turns out I've never been able to find something that I enjoy smoking that she enjoys smelling <laughs> in the aromatic world she's actually perfectly fine with me smoking on a bookshop but I'm trying to be nice it's always a mistake anyway so I ordered the, the haunted bookshop the nutty Irishman and the Saint Espresso and on Thursday, as predicted by the shipping uh, tracking, I got a, a box, but I actually got two boxes from Smoking Pipes. And I brought them in, and my wife wanted to know why there were two boxes, and I explained to her, well, I bought one at Bookshop, two pounds, and I bought some aromatics. They probably put them in separate boxes, but anyway, I opened up the smaller box first. And sure enough, there was some Nutty Irishman in the box, but oddly, there was two ounces of Nutty Irishman. I only ordered one, so that confused me a little bit, and I thought, well, let's find the same espresso. So I go digging through the packaging, and uh, the next thing I pulled out was a pouch of Peterson Irish Dew. And I thought, why? don't remember ordering Irish do and that's odd well let's see if the pipe cleaners are in here and I found two additional items a check tool which I know I didn't order and this really beautiful 8 deco tamper um, it's 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 called a gold cut diamond it's got a little bit of texture to the, to that diamond the, the diamond texture to the gold there um, really nice little scoop on the end here that also unscrews and gives you a little pick. Really cool little tamper, but I didn't order this. I thought, well, that's odd. Maybe they sent me the wrong stuff or, well, anyway, I then opened up the other box, fully expecting to find two pounds of haunted bookshop and some pipe cleaners that I threw in. Uh, and sure enough, they were in there, uh, as was my tin of St. Espresso and my one ounce of Nutty Irishman. Somebody was very kind, somebody that watches the live stream, because that's the only place I've really talked about these two blends. Um, somebody was very kind and, and sent me a gift. There was no identification in the in the box uh, as to who sent it, and I I'm still puzzled by this. But thank you very much, whoever you were, and uh, I'd love to thank you personally. So if you'd let me know, uh, that would be nice. Of course, I will reciprocate. Uh, but you know, it's once again we got a very very kind and thoughtful community here, and somebody was kind enough to to give me a gift. And I really do appreciate it, so thank you very much. Anyway, I've uh, I've smoked both of these. I've, I've had um, six or seven bowls of the San Espresso, and I've had about four bowls of the Nutty Irishman. I'm going to actually be smoking the Nutty Irishman this morning. And I should have pulled up the tobacco reviews but, uh, so that I could tell you more about both of these. 
but this one is uh, it's an aromatic from Cornell and Deal, the Nutty Irishman. It's um, based on the drink of the same name. It um, I'm trying to decide whether or not I should make a joke about the name. Uh, I've got a lot of Irish in me, so um, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go the direction most would, but you know, it's funny how you can you can have a, a very offensive name if, if you get right down to it. Nutty Irishman is offensive. It's funny. Uh, the Irishman in me enjoys it, but uh, you know, we live in a world where people get so easily offended, and yet you're allowed to make fun of some people. And the Irish are one of those people that you're just allowed to make fun of for some reason. Anyway, I'd much rather see us lighten up than uh, than change the name of this tobacco for sure. I like it. So let's get this lit up. Where's my lighter? No, oh, there it is. I'm using one of my Nimrods today. I hope. Maybe I have to refuel it. Well, I'll be refueling the Nimrod first. Always keep the fluid handy. So, yeah, I've had both of these. Uh, let me let me tell you a little bit about the Saint Espresso while I'm getting this worked out. So, Saint Espresso is an interesting blend. It's got three different types of Cavendish in it, and I'm going to forget exactly which tobaccos were included there. There was a cigar leaf Cavendish a Virginia-based Cavendish and a Burley-based Cavendish. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I like Cornell and Deal's Cavendish uh, that's based on the, I think it's Green River Burley. It's got some really nice Burley flavor to it. And often Cavendishes have no flavor. but they do wonderful things to the blend. The, the San Espresso then has a topping added which if I remember right, is um, vanilla cocoa coffee, and all of the reviews that I've seen have been very good. Uh, people seem to like it. The the review from Smoking Pipes was quite nice. Um, I think it was Shane Ireland that did it, and he said that the it was one of the few aromatics where the tin note taste and the room note were all identical. Well, I did try this, um, and this is from Warped. It's the Warped label, and that is a collaboration between, where is here? Kyle Jealous and Jeremy Reeves. Triple Cavendish mixture, unique tree out of distinct Cavendish variants, each carefully steamed and toasted, combined to evoke the velvety body and rich flavor of a fine espresso. Perfect to start your day, pick you up after lunch, or pair with an evening dessert. Exquisite coffee-inspired blend takes an exclusively different approach to the classic black Cavendish aromatic profile. So, I don't have a lot to say about this, which is why I'm smoking the other one. Um, I found this to be very bland in terms of the tobacco. I got no tobacco flavor out of it at all. It just was very, very flat, very monochromatic and, and bland. The topping, I can't taste anything but chemical nonsense. It's sweet, but very chemical. Like a, like a flavored coffee to me. Uh, I don't like this. I, I just, I think it was, I, I'm glad I tried it because, you know, I wanted to try another aromatic and this one was available. I didn't know this was a limited release until I looked at the 
the tin and saw that there were numbers on it. Um, so yeah, this was a this was this is a pass. I, I I did not enjoy this at all. I know a lot of folks did, but to me it just it just didn't have any flavor. It's not heavily topped. It's nice. It burns beautifully. It 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 the the tobacco is not overly moist. Um, very similar in texture to autumn evening, and smokes like autumn evening, but just doesn't have any flavor. Now the nutty Irishman was it was a pleasant surprise. I would guess, and again, I should have pulled up the uh, tobacco reviews on this. I would guess that we're, we're that this is a Cavendish with some burley. I don't think there's any Virginia in here. And the toppings are um, Frangelico and Irish mist, and that's to evoke the flavor of the uh, the drink, the Nutty Irishman, which I've never had, but it's apparently a <clears throat> Bailey's based drink. I, I, I don't know where, I didn't look that up either. So sorry, this is a relatively uninformed opinion here, but The nice thing about this is I can actually get some, some tobacco flavor. And the topping, while it does have a bit of that chemical edge to it, I can taste like hazelnut and Something sweet and creamy. Um, this is not bad. I mean, I, I'd, I've got three ounces of it now. I will smoke that. And it's something I can smoke on the on the trip. Unfortunately, I've smoked it around my wife several times, and she's she says I don't smell anything. <laughs> I guess I'm blessed with a wife that doesn't, uh, that's not overly sensitive to tobacco. So yeah, this is actually very nice. It, it I shouldn't say very nice. It, it's good. <clears throat> it's not my first choice of tobacco, but, and that's primarily because, well, there's two reasons. It could use a little bit more burly, uh, but that's me, you know. And that slight chemical uh, note that, again, is me, because I'm pretty sensitive to that, and a lot of folks don't taste it at all. Um, would I buy more Nutty Irishman? I might, might. I mean, if I was out of autumn evening, and just to, to give you an idea, so I've got, where is it? This tin of autumn evening I've had for over a year. And you know, so it's not like I'm smoking a lot of aromatics. I'll have maybe a bowl every two weeks. I like this sometimes on a Saturday or Sunday morning when I'm working down here. And that's why I keep it down here. So I don't go through aromatics very quickly. Uh, so this Nutty Irishman will last me a long time. <clears throat> if I were to be out of both Autumn Evening and Nutty Irishman, I'd buy Autumn Evening. It doesn't have that chemical note and it has a lot more flavor to it. But this is smooth and mellow. And I can say, you know, to go back to the Saint Espresso, I can say that this is, this is also smooth and mellow, <clears throat> but that's at the expense of flavor in this one. So I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I'm a, fan of Cornell and Deal. I'm a fan of Jeremy Reeves, and I really wanted to like 
Saint Espresso, but not my thing. I'll probably put it in a jar and maybe revisit it a few times. It's not going to improve because the only thing that's going to happen with age to that blend is you're going to lose the the topping, which would be a plus if the tobacco tasted like anything. Yeah, so there we go. Another two aromatics I can check off my list. Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm I'm perfectly happy with Pegasus and Honda Bookshop. I don't have to try anything else. I'd be happy to have just those two blends forever. Uh, on the aromatic side, I've got autumn evening. I've got the um, Dan Tobacco Honeydew, which uh, was sent to me by my buddy, the Durham Duke, and he sent me I don't know, like four ounces of it, eight ounces. I it, it's it's filled one of those Carter Hall tubs. And I'm, I smoke that occasionally. It's nice, it's very nice tobacco. So, do I need another aromatic? Uh, probably not. But usually twice a year around vacation time and then around the holidays, I try another one with this idea that I'm gonna find one I, I really like that's gonna be perfect for that. It never works out. But this, the Nutty Irishman really is not bad. So thanks to you guys that recommended it. I'm, I'm uh, happy that I've got this under my belt now. To all you guys that are loving the Saint Espresso, enjoy it. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, this is personal impressions. I'm not trying to turn anybody away from it. If you think you might like it, get a 10. But if you get a 10 and you don't like it, let people know. I'm not really a fan of negative reviews or negative impressions for the most part, but I think it's it helps people that haven't made up their mind yet to hear both sides. And, you know, you might... You might follow someone who does a lot of tobacco impression type videos and, and you've learned that your palate is like theirs. Well, then you should trust their opinion. Um, so if, if you've been watching someone else who says, boy, this Saint Espresso is fantastic and you've always enjoyed the tobaccos they've recommended, go and get it. Don't listen to me. Because I'm not an aromatic smoker. I just occasionally dabble. So in terms of uh, shop news, I finally completed my, uh, well, part of my Rubbermaid rack. Um, I'll show you a picture if I can remember which button to push here. That didn't work. There we go. So this is a four bin rack. I'm going to make another one that's a six bin rack, put them together and put a top on it. It looks a little distorted because of the angle of the picture. It's actually all square. And uh, yeah, I, I like it. it. It turned out really well. It'll hold four bins perfectly. It'll be up against the wall with a top on it. I'm not going to put sides or anything like that on it. Uh, the top, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do yet because I'm, I'm really annoyed that uh, plywood, even the cheapest, crappiest plywood is, is $50 a sheet right now. I'm not going to buy a $50 sheet of plywood to put something on that so I can stick tools on top of it. I just need something that's sturdy enough that I can put like my chop saw on my planer, things that I'm going to move off and put on either saw horses or my, my table saw or something like that. You know, I'm not going to do any work on that thing. So <clears throat> I might just take scraps that I have and, you know, put a top on it. It'll be ugly, but functional and use that $50 for something else. Probably haunted bookshop. Uh, so we're fully recovered from the, from the flood, which is great. Everything's nice and dry. 
got rid of the uh, musty smell and everything. The shop's still in a bit of a state of chaos because that's taking up space and everything had to be moved away from there. But the nice thing is I can use that now as, as a, a surface because my, my bench and my table saw are holding stuff right now. So I can use that as a surface to build the next one because it was hard to build that because I have to kneel on the, on the concrete and that was no fun. Uh, with my knees, it's a really stupid thing to do. So I gotta go get the wood for number two. One thing that, um, it's just stupid of me, but I, I was surprised at how heavy the darn thing is, which is good. You know, I want something solid that's not gonna move around when I bump into it and all, but you know, it took me five trips to take the wood from the car to the garage. Um, and 80% of that wood is in that structure. So the idea that I could just lift it up and move it is, well, I can lift it up and move it, but it's heavy. Um, I'm not gonna be swinging it around or anything. Uh, so it's fine, but it's just, it was surprisingly heavy when I finished it. And I thought, you dummy, you should have known that. So I got a lot to do today. I got, um, I, gotta, I usually brush the dogs on Sunday and I'll do that and play with them for a little bit. I got to get the garden beds prepped, uh, pull a few weeds, turn over the soil, add some compost. And then I've got plants finally decided what we're growing this year. So we're going to be, uh, I've got peppers. I, I like the Hungarian banana peppers and I've got some uh, little red cherry peppers, the, the hot cherry peppers. Uh, bought some cucumbers and then we got another plot that we're going to put some um, zucchini and what was the other thing eggplant in see how they do and then we've got a, a large bed that we're going to do beans um, green beans because we eat a lot of those and I'm going to try to put arugula in between the green beans I don't know how that's going to work out I've never never grown that before I'm actually doing both of those from seed so We'll see how it goes. I really do like arugula. Rocket for you Europeans. <clears throat> how in the world did you name a green rocket? I always wondered what was behind that. So if I get all that done, hopefully before it gets hot, I'll head over to um, one of the box stores. I'm probably going to try Lowe's because the wood at Home Depot was abysmal. And get the wood that I need for part two. And hopefully get that knocked out sometime during the week. Now that I know how to build one of them, the second one should be pretty easy. It's just one unit longer. And that, I'm rambling now, but that's put together with um, Craig pocket hole screws for the most part. I mean, some of it is uh, just deck screws that I've, that I've driven in, but uh, most of the joints are pocket hole joints. And for building that kind of shop furniture, it's wonderful. <clears throat> it allows you to make flush fit connections that you couldn't make otherwise. I mean, you can't drill down on a piece of wood into a second piece of wood that's end grain. You just can't do it. Uh, well, you can, but it's going to come apart. The pocket hole that you go at an angle, so you're catching side grain all the way through, and that it's, it's nice. I would never use it to build furniture. I'm too much of a traditionalist for that, but for, for this kind of stuff, I used it on the, the bench that's behind me as well, and it was great. Ah, one nice thing about Nutty Irishman, if, if you're into this sort of thing, is it makes a lot of smoke.
All right, folks, I think I've occupied enough of your Sunday. I've got stuff to do, and I'm sure you got stuff to do, too. So let's get off to that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps us get the word out. And I uh, look forward to your comments every week. So please uh, comment away. Don't know what this week holds yet, so maybe there'll be a Wednesday video. We'll definitely be back on Friday night with a live stream, Friday 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I hope you really have a, a wonderful Sunday and a great week. So with that, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.